All right, getting back to work on the diesel sears. So, today's objectives, we have a thermostat and a gasket here, and I already have the new thermostat housing uh, cover, whatever you want to call it, mocked up there. It's a straight one, which is what we're going to need to get over to the uh, pipe on, or the nipple on the radiator. And I have the all the special hoses and couplers, whatnot, coming today. Apologize there. I have, appear to be having trouble making my brain work, as usual. As far as the starter goes, I decided to go with a reduced gear starter over a direct drive because I'm going to be using the small garden or lawn tractor size battery and they don't they have about 300 cold cranking amps and the reduced gear starters take a lot less juice to run than a direct drive so they do not list a reduced gear starter for a two-cylinder Kubota and the reason for that is obviously the engine's shorter and it needs the room that on a two-cylinder the the alternator occupies however that's not a big deal and also it gets kind of close to the oil pressure sending unit which i'm going to be taking that out and putting the line in for a pressure gauge anyway so what we're going to do is i'm going to leave the starter about right here and i'm going to weld on a little material right there so i can have the entirety of a bolt hole for that to grab onto and then we'll just drill a hole there and it should be fine should be about here. I'll just put the nut on this side and make sure I don't use too long of a, a bolt so it's not hitting the flywheel. And we're not changing the distance between the starter gear and the flywheel because the starter centers itself on the hole, as you can see there. And the alternator, well, we already have a decent gap there. We're close to the end of the adjustment, so I'm gonna run a little bit shorter belt. And if we just give her a push up in there like that, you can see that opened up her gap a lot more. So. That's how we're gonna make a starter, a reduced gear starter work on a two cylinder that it shouldn't normally work on. So, so I don't drop this out of here, we're gonna pull this out. I'm gonna set her down there. And uh, like I said, my hoses for my radiator, holy cow, stand by. The hoses for the radiator are on the way. It's supposed to be here later today. So, once everything shows up, we're gonna get to work on this thing and uh, see what we get done. Awesome. Stay tuned. Something else I forgot to show you guys is uh, we got shafted, but in a good way. This is a drive shaft out of a John Deere 318 that I had shortened. And I had this uh, in a machine shop make this adapter and uh, should work. Alrighty. So I uh, had to switch to my phone here because my GoPro won't turn on. I don't know. It killed the battery once on me before just sitting, so I'm thinking that's what happened again, but who knows? It might be junk. Anyway, as you can see, my hoses showed up. We got them installed. There's the upper. That's a 1 inch to 7 eighths reducer and just a 7 eighths elbow. And then we got a 7 eighths. 45 degree elbow there and then the 7 8 to 1 inch 90 which uh, is more like a 75 <laughs> because she's flexing a little bit to meet that one but looks pretty good and uh, gonna do the job oh look at that it's already got cooling in it got my starter on here and where the where the bolt has to sit I ground my weld down and same with where the starter has to sit as well but we welded her real good the whole thing was glowing red <laughs> so I know it burned in and I uh, got our lower bolt in there as well so that should do the job oh I put in the uh, probe for the uh, temperature gauge and I have to tie it up but we snuck her down in there ah oh, crap it popped out of where I wanted it oh well I can fix that but I'm gonna have it sneak down along the engine and then run up behind here same with the line for the oil pressure gauge which is right there there's the coolant temp there's the uh, volt gauge and uh, if you see that hole there take your guesses as to what that'll be for but uh, yeah something cool 
eventually. That's a down the road thing. I want to get this thing running and driving first. But tomorrow, I'm going to my test tank is up at my house. So I'm going to bring that down and we'll hook my test tank up to it. And I'm going to fire this thing up and let it run up the temperature. And uh, just let it run, make sure everything's good. Uh, we'll test out the transmission a little bit. Just moving it forward and back. And I'll have to just put a hose on there with some clamps or something uh, for the time being. And then once that's, once I see it's running and the transmission's copacetic, uh, then I'll get the hoses made for the steering. And then I'll be able to drive it. And then we'll go on to doing wiring, tidying things up, uh, putting the hooking the throttle up, build my little linkage apparatus that I make, put my shutoff cable in, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Anyway, guys, you'll see this in the next clip, hopefully running. All right, guys, it's the next day. As you can see, we already got a fuel tank rigged up, and we got the back end jacked up, so that way, uh, if she starts going, the whole thing's not going to start going. Uh, what I have to do yet is, of course, remove these paper towels. Remove the starter because I need to take out my oil pressure sending unit and install uh, the fittings for the line to go up to the gauge. And then put the starter back on, run some wires, some test wires down to a, a battery that I'm going to sit on the floor. And then I think that's it. We'll be ready to start it. Hopefully the uh, hopefully the fuel pump isn't stuck and going to keep it from or prevent it from starting. But we'll find out soon enough. All right, stay tuned. Okay, we got our oil pressure gauge hooked up. Uh, I got fuel in the tank, and I took the lid off and blew into it and pushed the fuel up to the pump, so should just be able to glow it and crank it for a little bit. As long as the injection pump's not stuck off, she'll probably start. Oh yeah, give her a good glow there. Here's hoping that it starts up and has a good oil pressure. All right, see what happens. <laughs> I heard something go boink. Where the hell that was? Oh, my container uh, bolts fell down. Okay. I didn't see any oil pressure. Oh! Oh, we got oil coming up the line. Thank God, I was getting worried because I cranked it for a while earlier and I didn't get any oil pressure, but. All right, try two. Oh, ho, ho, ho. second guys all righty we got good oil pressure oh i think we're starting to get some temperature already so uh we're just gonna let her sit here and run the transmission does work good oh now i gotta reset that so we're just going to let her sit here and run for a little bit, and, uh, whoop, just in case, I highly doubt it could energize it by itself, but we're going to let her sit here for a little bit and, and run, but so far it runs pretty good, the drive shaft doesn't seem to be doing anything strange. All right. 
All right, we'll come back in a little bit. Alrighty guys, I think that's going to do it for this video anyway. You got to see it running and uh, the wheels turning on the back, so that's good. I got some, uh, I know some things I got to work on and change, but that's alright, we can do that. And uh, I need to... I need to get, oh no, my stupid relief valves are leaking. I have to get those replaced. Oh well. But uh, I gotta get my steering plumbed up. So that'll be the next thing. We'll get the steering plumbed and we'll be able to take it for a drive. Unfortunately, I have some customer work that I have to take care of in the next couple weeks. So this is going on hold for a little bit, but not long, just long enough to get some, make a little bit of money so I can keep rolling on this thing, so I have money to spend on it. <laughs> but anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you're enjoying this build as much as I am, and let me tell you, I'm really enjoying it, especially today. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching, and take care.